this is Julia with episode number 52 of the Mixology Talk podcast. Well, this week we have something ever so slightly different. We used to do a couple interviews way back when, but it has been a little while. Well, today we have a special guest who's joining us. Her name is Christina Maffei, and she is the brand ambassador for the Perfect Puree of Napa Valley. We thought we'd bring her on to talk about using purees in the place of fresh fruit in cocktails. Now, before we get into it, I do want to let you know that this episode is sponsored by the Perfect Puree of Napa Valley. But part of the reason we brought them on and partnered with them is that Chris has used their product quite a bit in the past. They do a really good job, and they really do focus on quality. So this is definitely a product that we are proud to support on our podcast. Plus, I'm totally biased. They're actually located in the Napa Valley in California, which is where I grew up. You'll hear a little bit more about that in our conversation with Christina. So without further ado, let's get into it. So today I was hoping to talk about the idea of fresh fruit and how challenging it can be to use fresh fruit in cocktails when you don't always have it available. I think we would all absolutely love to always have the best fruit at the peak of the season all the time, but none of us are quite that lucky. I know you live in Hawaii, so you have some amazing fruit available to you. And we live in Northern California, so we're also spoiled. But one of the sort of core tenets of craft mixology is the concept of fresh fruit. And I would love to get your thoughts on, especially looking at citrus, are there ways that the perfect puree concentrates can help you sort of get around that fresh fruit problem when you can't get the good stuff? Absolutely. And I was just doing some experimenting too, because before one of my jobs before I am now, I was working for um, Trump Hotel Waikiki. And so, of course, they're one of my best customers at this point. Of course. (laughs) Because when I was there, I had put in, I I actually implemented, we used about 14 or 15 different of the purees. Oh, wow. And even though we live in Hawaii, it's fresh fruit isn't as readily available to us as everyone seems to to think. Mm -hmm. And it really is just the papaya, the pineapple, and seasonally the mangoes but for the most part i mean when you're talking any um like melons or berries i mean yeah we have them but they're shipped in from who knows where and they're never consistent and like strawberries look great but they never have any flavor to them so Mm. although i'm very much an advocate of using as much fresh ingredients and the whole farm to table and everything i don't I, i really don't necessarily agree with that for cocktails yeah. here yeah. And, and especially like in climates you know when i was in chicago during the winter months i mean forget getting any kind of fresh fruit that actually had a lot of flavor to it oh yeah um, absolutely the, the purees are great because you get a consistent product every time you make it when i think of fresh fruit and cocktails i mean obviously the first thing i think of is lemon and lime And I know that if I'm not mistaken, Perfect Puree has a Meyer lemon concentrate and a key lime concentrate. And they're concentrates, right? They're not purees? Correct. Do you know how that's different? Well, the the concentrates are more of just, I'd say the juice versus the purees or like have the pulp and it's a thicker consistency to it. Oh, okay. So with the Meyer, like when I was experimenting since since Trump is still a good place for me to, to stop and I always pop in and they they have the most purees of any of the, the clients I have here on the island. So we were playing around with some of the concentrates in place of the lemon and the lime juice to use the lemon, the fresh lime sour. One of the things I had implemented was just making sure everything has to always have a fresh sour. And I usually use a ratio of a quarter lemon, quarter lime, and then half simple syrup. Well, we were having problems for a little bit actually getting fresh lemons and limes and the price just skyrocketed yeah, for whatever that. reason yeah. with you know seasonal or shipping or where they were coming from and that's when we kind of were looking at it and saying all right where can we how can we still have a fresh product and not necessarily have to be squeezing fresh limes yeah. and it, it turned out to be a fantastic and i mean you you almost couldn't tell the difference between which one was which when you make it and mix it in a cocktail it's still, it tastes as if it's fresh squeezed lime juice. And a little trick, what I like to do too, is take a little bit of that lemon zest that we carry at Perfect Puree and add that in just for a little bit of texture too. Oh, interesting. You know, I didn't know that you carried a zest. Is it like, I mean, obviously it's, what is what's the texture of it? Is it like um, a, a it's like puree a, just a really or? fine grated? There's huh. uh, the lemon zest, and then there's the orange zest also. 
Oh, that's interesting. We'll have to give that a try. Yeah, definitely. I definitely did not know that. One of the things that we have definitely done is to use less than ideal citrus juice, but then to spritz it with a citrus oil. Mm-hmm. And that definitely makes a big difference because it adds back the aroma. Right. But um, I'll definitely have to try that as well. Yeah, that sounds really good. So when you use it, I mean, like you mentioned, the, the Meyer lemon and the key lime are concentrates. So does that mean that you have to adjust your recipe to accordingly? Do you need to add water? Or- yes. Well, what we did when we were testing out the sour mix is we did dilute it with a bit more water and then a bit more simple syrup also. Okay. So I- I can't remember off the top of my head what the ratio was, but you certainly need to dilute it down because it's just a much stronger since it's the concentrate. Which makes sense, exactly. Yeah, no, that that makes a lot of sense. I don't think we've uh, tried that ourselves. We've definitely tried quite a few strange sort of citrus alternatives. We tried powdered lime juice. We tried, gosh, what have we tried? Citric acid and uh, lime oil, all kinds of stuff. the, The kind that comes in the little plastic lime. We've definitely done oh, that yes. too. Oh, yeah. It's still in our fridge because we used it for that video, it's and then we've so never terrible. used it again because it's so awful. Do not recommend that for anybody. <laughs> Seriously, just throw it away. It's yeah, so- <laughs> it's like a little green hand grenade of it's terrible. terrible. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, um, we shouldn't even admit to that. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> so my next question was actually if you use purees in your own bar, but you've totally answered that question already. It sounds like you use yeah. a huge variety. Every I've, I've worked at a few different properties over the past years and every place that I've been at actually I have implemented using perfect puree and this goes back to the Fairmont Chicago, Trump Hotel Chicago, Trump Waikiki, Hilton Hawaiian Village, now at the Halicola Hotel oh, wow. here and so I'm kind of making my way down through Waikiki also and making yeah. sure that all, as so, many bars as, uh, so many as of our can. yeah if any of our listeners are out there in Hawaii they, <laughs> they just got a list of places to go get great cocktails I think. <laughs> We'll have to make a list of that and put that in the show notes for sure. But yeah, no, that's amazing. Do you, so I know there's a huge spectrum of different purees available. I was scrolling through the list on the Perfect Puree website and I just, I can't even, I can't even remember all of them. Are there any that you actually have the fresh fruit available? I know that Hawaii grows pineapple. That's the one thing that comes to mind. Do you ever choose puree over fresh fruit, even when you have the fresh fruit available? Yeah, actually, I would, for me personally, almost all the time. Really? (laughs) Really. Just because, again, like, it's just, you get such a consistent product. And when you're actually, it's one thing if you're making a cocktail at home for a party, if you can find the fresh fruit and it's in season and it tastes great, then I say, you know, go with that. It's a one-time thing. But when you're actually talking about going to a bar and serving this cocktail and putting it on your menu, you, it's all about consistency. That That's drink so needs true. to be the same no matter whether it's the first day that you put it on the menu or a year later. And that's what you're going to get with Perfect Puree. So yeah. when it comes down to it, I mean, honestly, I prefer most of my recipes have um, purees. I mean, versus, I mean, I I mean the only time I'm, put it this way, the only time I'm using any fresh fruit is when there isn't a flavor that's available at Perfect Puree. <laughs> Such well, that's cucumber. persuasive. <laughs> cucumber. It sounds like we need to uh, to let them know there's an opportunity there. Well, I got a list already. <laughs> uh-huh, nice. <laughs> Working with them. I love it. I love it. That is really interesting. Yeah, I could imagine if you have fresh fruit available, it's a lot more work, right? Because the puree, you just put it right in the cocktail, right? Yeah. And it, here's a very good example. Back in 2011, I had um, competed at the World's Best Mai Tai competition, and I happened to actually come in first place. And Just um, so happened I to. Congratulations. Happened to, and I credit that. Uh, I think my secret ingredient, really, that, that made it for the win was the Perfect Puree's Caramelized Pineapple Puree. Ooh, yeah. And I had actually tried it out with just roasting, car- roasting pineapple, putting it on the grill, putting it in a blender, blending it up, and oh my goodness, it just didn't even compare to the quality of what Perfect Puree is. It's wow. amazing because you may get the flavor, but again, you're going to get it different every time if you're trying to do it in-house. Mm-hmm. And the texture was just hard to work with, with the fresh pineapple. And yeah. again, like Hawaii, I will say hands down has the best pineapple in the world, but it's still, you can't compare it to when you're using a puree for a cocktail. That caramelized pineapple puree is just amazing. 
I think we're gonna have to try that one. I definitely have not tried it. <laughs> That's one of my favorites by far. <laughs> it sounds so good. I'm I'm the sweet tooth in this relationship. Chris <laughs> likes the he likes Manhattans, he likes gin and tonics, and I'm like, I am all about the sweet drinks. Our our listeners already know that about me. So I think that pineapple puree is gonna be happening for me. And for sure. actually let me ask you a question real quick. Do you have is there a link that we could uh, link to for your caramelized uh, mm. pineapple Mai Tai recipe? Because I'm curious oh, to find gosh. out. Oh, gosh. It's in quite a number of places, actually. I think the recipe has uh, made its way around the world by this point. Yeah, oh, probably right. so. Well, we'll definitely <laughs> include that in the show notes, which, as you folks know, is mixologytalk.com slash 52. Episode 52 now, I think. Holy cow. It? I know. I feel so old. <laughs> <laughs> no, that sounds really delicious. And I think another thing that, I mean, just as a consumer that I've noticed about fresh fruit is, I mean, maybe this is just my inability to pick good fruit, but it's like the one peach to the next, right next to each other on the grocery store shelf can taste vastly different. Things like um, uh, uh, grapefruit, I think there's a huge spectrum of sweetness and bitterness and flavor. And so I think that's a huge redeeming quality for something like puree, where you know you actually receive a bottle, and the top of the bottle tastes the same as the bottom of the bottle, and that's hundreds of cocktails. Right. And that's why, I mean, there's some flavors that we carry, such as tamarind or blood orange, that mm. it's, it may be hard to find uh, in a grocery store. And it's just, it's it's so easy to use, and yeah. it's just perfect, every, hence perfect puree. Perfect like puree. every time we use it. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, do you have a, a favorite flavor that you love working uh, with cocktails with? Oh my gosh! Um, because you I have really so many. I mean, pineapple. I mean, I, I think I tend to lean a little more towards those island flavors, just because that's kind of what environment I'm in. So mm -hmm. I'm always thinking tropical. Yeah. Um, but but even still, the the coconut puree is amazing. I haven't seen another product that even compares at all. And the coconut puree is is it really just tastes exactly like a pureed coconut it has this wow. nice creamy rich texture to it and just this really creamy soft but subtle flavor to it that's just amazing oh my god and when when you're trying to make some tropical drinks here and i just it kills me to use like a coco lopez or something that's a coconut syrup because right. to me it all it is is sugar it's sugar it's with true. some kind of coconut flavor and when you take some of those classic drinks, when you're using um, that Coco Lopez or whatever type of mixer and you substitute it with a coconut puree, it, it'll blow your mind. Like there's just a completely different everything about the drink, the, ta wow. the taste, the texture, the consistency, and it's just so much better. Well, I think that's a really interesting point because when I think of processed fruit flavor, I mm -hmm. think of sweetness. You know, I think of like any sort of situation behind the bar where you're looking at adding fruit flavor and it's seen its way through a factory. There's always a bunch of sugar involved. But purees, especially the perfect puree, they don't really do that, right? I think there's a little, it's like just the fruit, maybe a little bit of acid and a little bit of sweetener, but exactly. it's not, I mean, it's and definitely not overpowering. That's the big difference too. Even when you're talking about making a strawberry daiquiri, the stuff that you have on the shelf, that's a shelf stable product that again is half sugar and versus putting in a fresh strawberry puree makes and all the difference in the world. Oh, yeah. But with perfect purees, it's not, you know, you, you made a comment that you like the sweeter drinks, but they don't have to be when you're using the purees yeah. because it's up to you how much sugar you want to use, not up to the company, whoever had bottled the product, because <laughs> that's a lot of times what they do. But that's, when it comes to, to the products that are um, on the shelf and, and shelf stable and just all sugar, all that they do is they take a basic recipe. So when they're when they do use fresh fruit, it doesn't. Sometimes it could be underripe. Sometimes it could be overripe, and it doesn't matter. They add the same amount of sugar no matter what. And even bottle to bottle, those products tend to be not as consistent as they should be. But with perfect puree, they actually measure how much the, the bricks or the, the amount of sugar that's actually in the fruit and in each batch. So they know just how much to add so that every jar, no matter what batch that they're preparing or bottling, is going to be the same product that you're getting. That's I definitely did not know they did that on a batch by batch level. That's amazing. I just assumed there was so much volume that sort of averaged out in the end. I think that that shows the sort of attention to detail. 
Oh, absolutely. I personally really like this product. It's something that we have definitely worked with. Chris, you've worked with it uh, behind the bar as well, right? Yeah, I've had uh, quite a bit of exposure with a perfect puree for many years, and I, I couldn't agree with you more, you know. Um, just the consistent nature of what you guys are doing is it's a godsend because I remember when I would start to make my own purees and running into the same bottlenecks and kind of inconsistent products that you were talking about. And for an average, you know, for an up and coming bartender to have the expertise to kind of push flavors in a certain direction by adding more sugar, acid, and trying to balance them out, it's a really hard thing to master. And not only that, but um, it could take you hours Oh, make a yeah, batch of puree. absolutely, absolutely. And just, I mean, such a, a small detail that we may not think about when we're trying to go into a process of making our own purees, but, you know, when you're trying to make a raspberry or strawberry puree, you're dealing with all those little seeds. Mm -hmm. And the oh my gosh. Puree, yeah. there's no seeds. Yeah. <laughs> it is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> it is so true, though. I think um, we've made, we have a juicer, and so we've, we've like, juiced strawberries and then We've juiced like, everything. Anything that can get true. thrown in that juicer, by, oh my God. It has great. made some horrible sounds. Like, what are you doing to me? <laughs> <laughs> but even then, that's that's like the only other way that gets rid of all the other sort of components and leaves you with a juice mm -hmm. that it doesn't have all sorts of stuff in it. But even then, you still find strength. I don't have you? to, yeah, even yeah. at that point. Yeah. yeah. So I, I just had one final question because um, one thing we haven't mentioned is the fact that Perfect Puree products come frozen. And yes. in sort of a slushy consistency, depending, I suppose, on the on the temperature of your freezer. Yeah. Um, so I would love to hear, uh, I mean, obviously you can't put a frozen solid thing into a cocktail. How do you put, use that in a bar workflow? Do you let it defrost? Do you keep it in the fridge? Do you decant it into something else? No, I mean, it's so very easy to use. And I, I mean, I love the fact that it comes in frozen. Sometimes it's a little difficult to find space, but you know, you're getting a fresh product. Yeah. And it's, they, they can be kept in, in the freezer for about over a year, but then all you got to do is pull one of those out, just let it thaw for a little bit. Or if you know ahead of time, uh, what we used to do is just put one in the fridge, you know, we'd rotate them out. So just a day in the fridge allows it overnight to just thaw out and it's ready to go for the next morning. Oh, perfect. And what's really nice about the jars too, is that they're actually designed so that all you have to do is take off the lid and then just screw on one of the, um, store and pours and you can pour straight from there. Right. Or my preference is to just put it in a little squeeze bottle, depending on what, how much product you're using for each of the cocktails. And I, I love it. It's so easy. That's how I used to use them. Chris it's just the same thing. Uh, decant them all in the squeeze bottles and yep. go from there. And actually, kind of want, while we're on a subject, is there any other tips that you have for bartenders? Or I know that even Perfect Parades has a pretty strong presence in the pastry community as well. Because Absolutely. the same things we're talking about, consistent I mean, product and flavors and all that stuff. But kind of curious to see um, if you have any other tips about working with purees in either of those kind of um, environments. Um, well, that's actually where I had first seen perfect puree was in my pastry department and mm -hmm. then kind of realized, oh, let me play around with this. What's okay. That? <laughs> and, you know, I remember we grabbed a white peach and used it for the bellinis and well, the rest is history. And that was like 10 years ago. Right. So wow. it's the um, same way I got introduced to it too. Bellinis. Same exact scenario. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, one thing I, I guess one thing I wanted to touch on also is the fact that we also have a, a line of our blends. So for some bartenders who may be a little scared or hesitant to approach the, um, you know, maybe more creative side of coming up with recipes and what to do with blueberry puree or a lychee puree or something like that, we actually have our bar blends that are kind of a, a one-stop shop, let's say, and it's a craft cocktail that's already been put together and just frozen, and then you can just add your maybe one or two even um, spirits. So there's items such as a chipotle sour Mm. Or yuzu Ooh. sour. So those very... already, they're totally balanced. You really just sort of add the spirit yes. component? Oh, wow. Yes. And there's that sounds one, like a um, great idea for consumers as well, frankly. I mean, if yeah. I was just to want a tasty cocktail that I could grab at a moment's notice. I mean, right nowadays, I just make Chris make it for me. <laughs> but... <laughs> And uh, you just gave away the secret. That's exactly what I do. I just have booze to it. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> One of the ones I love on the blend side is for, you know, maybe certain areas that don't always have mint readily available. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. There's a mojito blend that oh, has nice. real in it. And well, it's, it's great because you get all of the flavors of the fresh lime and the mint and everything in, in, in it. And you just add rum and it's it's perfect, ready to go. I think oh you gosh. just made a lot of bartenders year because, I mean, that is oh, kind of the yeah. stigma about bartending, right? <laughs> 
I don't want to oh, make Bloody Marys and I don't want to make mojitos, right? It's, it's That's amazing. my tip. You Everybody's... ask for a tip for bartender. My tip is for bartenders, ask your managers to purchase the perfect puree mojito blend. Oh, my, <laughs> oh my God. That's they life easier. brilliant. Oh, oh yeah, my God. I can't tell you. It's the weirdest thing. Like, everywhere I go, they're always out of mint. <laughs> yeah. Just so, like, what are so the chances? Yeah. yeah. It's so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a really good cheat. I like that Yeah, no, I love it. How did I not try that? So one last thing I did want to mention is... Is that the Perfect Puree has uh, made a special offer for listeners of this podcast? Um, obviously, all three of us really do think this is a great product and kind of want to spread the word because they're actually in my hometown, believe it or not. I grew up in Napa, California, and the Perfect Puree is just down the street. So yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit biased, but um, <laughs> they have a special offer for listeners of this podcast. If you head over to the show notes at mixologytalk.com slash 52, there will be a link there where industry professionals can go and request samples. And I think uh, folks can actually ask for specific samples, right? Yes. Yes, okay, so make sure Mojito in. is on that list for mm-hmm. sure. <laughs> so that when I come to your bar and I order a Mojito, you won't have to lie and say you're out of mint. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, actually. You'll be able to actually request eight different flavors that'll come in a nice little sample pack of nice. um, two ounce per flavor uh, samples. Which is enough for one or two cocktails, right? Mm-hmm. Not- exactly. Perfect. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to ask is maybe just tell us about the program, how to get started with it. But it sounds like that's it. Just go to the website. Pick out your eight different flavors, and they ship it to you. Go to town. Yes. That's amazing. That is a really great awesome. kind of introduction to the to the brand. Well, thank you so much, Christina. I really appreciate you joining us and chatting for a little bit. I know that uh, this is a little bit of a different style episode for us, <laughs> but it's been a lot of fun chatting with you all, from all the way over in Hawaii. feels like we're in Hawaii right now. It's about 100 degrees in this room, but somehow we made it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much for joining us, and we will put the recipe for your prize-winning cocktail in the show notes as well. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you. Yeah, mahalo. Uh, Mahalo. (laughs) So thank you so much, Christina, for coming on the show with us. I really actually learned a lot. I thought I knew about all the flavors that the Perfect Puree has, but I did not know about the Mojito blend, and I'm going to have to get me some of that right away. So definitely check out the show notes over at mixologytalk.com slash 52. We will include the recipe for Christina's prize winning Mai Tai cocktail. It's something that I'm definitely going to try as well. And for all you industry professionals, definitely head on over to the show notes if you're interested in ordering some of those perfect puree samples. I really do highly recommend them. Even if you just put them in a Bellini with some sparkling wine, it is a good way to start your Sunday morning. So thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. We will catch you next time. Cheers. Never miss an episode by subscribing in iTunes or YouTube. And as always, check out the show notes by clicking on the right.